TV. All right, welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed your holiday. And we're back with Playgrounds TV with a very special first guest, Jeremy Hoffman. Hey. hey <laughs> welcome welcome in our studio. Yeah, thanks. Um, Great to be here. Really looking forward uh, to discuss with you a lot of subjects. I made an intensive presentation with a lot of beautiful imagery uh, that you created. Um, but before we're going to start um, going diving a little bit more deeper into your artwork, uh, I want to know a little bit more about you. Um, okay. Can you briefly tell us how did you start drawing? How I started drawing? Uh, well, that started at an early age. Uh, like everybody else, I guess uh, every kid draw, uh, draws a lot. And uh, that was the same for me. I was drawing all day. And uh, the older I got, uh, the more I start uh, drawing. Um, and at a certain point, uh, people start to notice that uh, you're pretty good at drawing, even as a kid, you can see differences. Um, so I kept on drawing and, 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 and I already knew from an early age that I wanted to do something with drawing. Didn't know what yet. Uh, of course, as a kid, you read comics and uh, that's the closest thing to you. Um, but also looking at uh, art and my mother also painted. Mm -hmm. And when I was young, she also took me to uh, museums, etc. So you saw all those paintings. And also those things were appealing to me and I'm like, okay, maybe I can be a painter or I can do books or whatever. Um, but it's just a dream. But I, I knew that I wanted to do something with drawing. Uh, teachers told me, yeah, you're going to do something with drawing. And when I got older, um, you have to choose certain directions. Uh, what do you want to study? Uh, there was a point that I wanted to go to art school and then uh, nothing related to what I did as a kid drawing characters because that's what I did, drawing characters, coming up with ideas. But I wanted to do uh, art, uh, expressive art. So I applied for the school and uh, yeah, I wasn't, uh, they didn't took me as a student. So oh, yeah. I was really disappointed. Um, that cartoon back then wasn't that yeah. appreciated at Art Academy. No, and, 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 and I, I, I need to be honest, I only had those cartoon drawings. Mm -hmm. And tho those were from a certain level, but uh, I missed out on a lot of stuff to show. And, and you can tell you can do it, but they need to, to see it. And maybe also, depending on your age, you think in a different way. And, uh, and I had a, a lot to learn about that as well. Uh, now I'm older, I can see maybe why they didn't uh, took me as a student. Uh, I didn't, maybe I was, wasn't thinking in the right way. Um, so at that point, I, I needed to make a switch and I decided to become a graphic designer. Uh, that was the closest thing that I could choose. Uh, back in the days, you didn't have that many um, options. Um, I'm not that young anymore. Uh, well, it's around 80s, 90s. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm now uh, 45, so um, there were less options. Uh, you didn't have the internet. Um, and graphic design was close. You had schools uh, nearby. Um, I, uh, there was a period when I was a kid that I do, did graffiti. So it's with, uh, yeah. You, you make words uh, on the walls and okay designing uh, for advertisements is also with words and so I did that and, and back then there was no industry that actually used character design etc right so it was more like no, graphic design no. based that if you want to have a job now when I look back at it there were some uh, schools that were focused on illustration yeah. but I wasn't aware about that yeah. uh, years later you hear it and I th thought like okay why didn't do uh, didn't I do that but mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't know about it. So I chose for that, and I, and I expected to, to draw a lot in those schools. Um, well, you could draw, but yeah, the focus was different. Um, but I was happy, uh, happy being there. And um, I studied, uh, I finished it as a graphic designer, also did an extra year as a multimedia designer. Um, and then after that, I... I looked for a job, but I couldn't find one. I worked four years in a clothing store uh, as a salesman, and uh, it was a great time, had a lot of fun, um, but I missed, of course, uh, the drawing. And, um, and then I was lucky that I found a job uh, at a gaming company, 
and I wasn't aware about that they existed in the Netherlands. They asked somebody to draw characters, uh, and I thought, hey, maybe that's something for me. Mm -hmm. But in all those years, uh, when I worked in the clothing store, when I was at school, I also stopped drawing. I didn't sketch for myself anymore. Maybe it stopped already when I was 18. So I, I had a almost 10 years that I didn't draw. So when I applied for that job at a game uh, studio, I only had stuff from school a little bit. From 10 years ago. Yeah, it was really bad. Oh. And uh, I really had to convince them, like, okay, give me a chance. I'll prove myself that I can do it. I know I can do it, but I, I need to show. And, uh, well, they gave me the opportunity. And uh, I've worked for almost, uh, I think, 14 years in the gaming industry as an all-round artist. Um, creating everything, uh, backgrounds, characters, user interfaces, concept. Uh, I've been lead, I've been um, uh, art director. Uh, I've tried everything. And uh, yeah, in the casual gaming industry, so you have differences. Uh, you have the, for the consults, it's really different, different audience. Um, and we create uh, games for the tablets and the phones. Uh, back in the days, the, the desktop computers. Um, but in all those years that I uh, worked there, um, I, I, I never f focused on character design. Uh, sometimes you were, I was lucky and I could do some characters, um, but along those years, um, depending on the role, you do less. And, and at a certain point, I started to miss certain creativity, and um, I knew that I missed creating characters because that was a thing that I loved to do when I was a small kid. And um, I think now five years ago, Five years ago, I really decided to change things for myself. And um, uh, it was related to, okay, am I happy with my work? Um, looking back uh, at when I was young, when I was young, I could do this. And why didn't I do this? And I could, uh, could have reached much more in my life and uh, I wasted it. And that's that was how I was thinking at that moment. Mm -hmm. And then I, I said to myself, man, you need to stop whining and you need to change things. You're still young. Uh, I was 40 at that moment. Uh, this is the moment to, to start. To make that switch. To make that switch. And then I started to dedicate myself in, in my spare time in practicing, only focusing on character design, stepping back to the roots, stepping back to the beginning, uh, being humble in what I need to learn, uh, admitting that I was missing skills. Um, and that's where this journey s started as a character designer. And so also trying to get back that enthusiasm yeah. that you had as yeah, a child. Yeah, that I lost. Yeah. Uh, that I uh, not drawing for 10 years, and then I did draw a lot uh, for the gaming companies, of course, and I was really happy and it was a great doing it because... I I was happy that I could draw for a living. It was yeah. great. Yeah. Uh, couldn't be better. But um, the, the fact that I missed things and that I wanted to do, I don't know, since I started this, this, this journey, as I call it, as, as developing myself as a character designer, I, I really felt that I started to live again. Oh, right. I really like, uh, again, like I was 15, where I, I left it at uh, that age. I picked that up and I continued with that journey. Hey, regarding journeys, um, you always have like a little sketchbook with you. You have a little bit of limited time, but you always have a sketchbook with you. You draw a lot by references. What are you looking when you do these kind of drawings? What are you looking for? Uh, yeah, it, it depends. Depends on the moment. Uh, um, I carry my sketchbook wherever I go. And it depends on how much time I have also, because sometimes I only have five minutes, so I do a quick sketch. Mm -hmm. Are there people around me? Um, but I try to capture uh, small moments, small stories, um, a certain person that looks in a, uh, wears certain clothes, acts in a way. Um, whatever is there, I, I grab. And if it's not there, then I'll find something that's there. I, so it can be everything. Can be uh, location. Can be uh, yeah, what you see here, small kids, and it's all in between because uh, I have two kids myself. So when we go uh, out um, with the kids, 
I carry my sketchbook with me. So in between when, th when they play, I make quick sketches. Uh, sometimes it's just a minute quickly and I close my book again and I'll continue uh, wherever I am. But it's really, yeah. Is it in a way, uh, some, some people grab immediately their smartphone camera. Is it like your way of writing down memories? So is it, is, is it that also sense as well? Because you have like, I, there are a few here on the table, but you yeah. have like a whole library of these cats. <laughs> so in a way, is it also you looking at the world and as a, as a kind of a visual diary? Yeah, it is. Uh, for myself, it is. Um, whenever I look at those sketches, I remember those moments. Uh, for an outsider, they look at my sketchbook and they see that small story. But mm -hmm. when I look at it, I, I, can all, I remember everybody almost. So yeah. all those persons and what they did. Um, so it's a double thing. It's, it's developing my skills. Uh, you try to practice things, things that you learn uh, at home. Um, but you learn at the spot, of course, because you're analyzing people, uh, uh, you're analyzing poses, you're an analyzing situations, facial expressions, all those things. And also you try to um, draw them really fast. So can I show what's there in a fast way? Because sometimes it looks really technical if you uh, see my drawings, and but if you look closely, um, there are just a few lines. And that's cool because then I can um, snap shot that moment really fast uh, instead of really wasting time on thinking about it. You, yeah, you don't need to doubt about the moment. You really need to know what you're what you're going to draw. Is it is it also in a way for you your reference library? So I can imagine that if you have a job or uh, people are quite specific, uh, for example, you have the assignment of of creating a bully. Uh, are you then looking through your sketchbooks and it helps uh, you sometimes to find some reference that you say, well okay, this, this really has a feature of a bully that I can use? Yeah, maybe sometimes, but I, I think they're already in my head then because right. you, you take all those parts in your head and you use them whenever. But um, like what you said, if I go through my sketchbook, then I can come up with uh, hundreds of thousands of characters uh, just with one image. So it, really, it, it can help me. Yeah, because when I look through your sketchbooks, and we were lucky to have you in the 2070 part of an exposition, yeah, so people could cool. also see it. It For us, it's also so inspiring. So I can imagine that sometimes you also use all those references for you as to inspire yourself or to get in that moment again. Like, for example, we just showed the little clip of the of your daughters here playing in, in an amusement park. That is like a kind of certain joy that, that you actually can use also when you have to design little kill children or like shots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because you, you you're looking for m different things. Yeah? The, a small story that happens, but also what kind of uh, how do you say it manners? Uh, what do people do at certain moments? And and also I try to look for the diversity because each kid is different and each grown up is different and each situation is different. Each time of the moment and wherever you are, everything is different and people react in a different way. And that's what I like about it. Uh, even when people look at their phones, uh, back in the, uh, when I still worked uh, at the game uh, company, uh, I had to travel every day by, uh, with the train. That's also where it started for me. I took my sketchbook and I started drawing in the train at the train station, um, day in, day out. When I, in the morning, when I went home, um, so you see people looking at their phones. It's pretty boring, I can tell you. I think it's, uh, I don't like that spot anymore. But although people are looking at their phone and you think like they're doing it in the same way, well, they're not. Everybody is looking in a different way and reacting in a different way. And then I try to find those small differences. So um, you look at what's there. And you sometimes you see something that's really obvious. Huh? People are playing football or um, something big. But even in small things, you you start to notice things. Uh, somebody's biting his nails or whatever. It's interesting that you're saying because uh, it's a reference. We just yeah. saw saw some examples of it. But it's also that you're saying, okay, it's in my mind as well. So in that sense, yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. kind of a training uh, as, yeah. as muscle memory. Like like yeah. if you're a soccer player, Absolutely. there's like this snap moment, the ball yeah. comes, and then yeah. you have to make that move. Yeah. It's not a move that you really have the time yeah. to think about it. You actually have to act. Yeah. So your, your, your memory starts to react. Yeah. 
So when you're going to design, all those references that are put in your mind comes quite naturally out of your fingers? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I mean, it's easy when somebody is standing in front of you and they're standing still in that pose. Of course, then you can really uh, look and sketch and look and sketch. But sometimes uh, people uh, are in, in motion and they have an action. And then you really have to think, okay, what are, are, they, are they doing? And, or you try to uh, look at if, if they are repeating it. So then you can analyze, okay, what happens when they jump? Uh, what happens with their body, with their weight, with their face? Um, and then you try to snapshot it, that you understand the uh, anatomy of, the, of the, how they move. And then you try to capture that. And in this case, uh, I, I sketch with pens. Uh, people often ask me, like, do you first sketch with uh, pencils? Uh, but I don't. Uh, I can sketch with pencils. I have some sketchbooks where I did it. But here I, I use pens directly to force myself to think about what I draw so that I can't hide in erasing it. And, 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 and I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I, I continue with my drawing and then it's good. It so doesn't it, need to so be it's, perfect. It's, it's a little playful sketching that actually triggers you to find the right lines? Yeah, absolutely. Because you can't hide with those pens. Yeah. Um, you have to put a line, and if it doesn't work, you do it again. So and you do it again, and you do it again. Yeah, because a lot of people, they use some yeah. reference material, yeah. like, like, like geometry yeah. shapes, and then yeah. they some guiding yeah. lines. But for you, it's a, uh, also an interesting challenge to really, like, like, that, like painters, maybe you're, you have like yeah. some memory on your mother, yeah. uh, actually, that like painters try to find the right pinches of, yeah, of paint because they want to... It becomes a life of that. Okay. And, and, and sometimes, uh, for example, uh, when you're on the train, uh, sometimes you have a bumpy ride. Well, if you have a small book and you try to sketch, then it's going like this yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. And I don't care. I think uh, that's fun. And uh, I try to make it work uh, as well. Uh, or uh, when I can't sit to draw, I just stand. It's a thing I... I, I, I I always draw where, wherever I can. I, I, I'm not looking for excuses not to draw. I just do it. And if it's not the perfect moment, I still adapt to that and I just draw. Hey, when I, when I look also at your drawings, I see, like for example, this one. Um, there is like, I can imagine it's, it's really suitable for picture books. Uh, like as a really illustration. So yeah. next to the character design, I think like doing like picture books kind of illustration. But is that something that, is less interesting for you, or it's why do you don't do it? It's a question uh, more people ask me to. They ask me to illustrate things, but it, it, it hasn't my focus at this moment. Okay. I really, I'm dedicated to character design, mm -hmm. and I really want to grow in that. Uh, that's what I love, and I love this as well, but not for now. Okay. Who knows what the future will bring me? Um, it's cool to do, and, and, and what you see here as well, uh, here I have time to draw, so then I can make a really uh, bigger drawing as uh, a location. Depends on how much time I have. If I'm there to chill with friends, uh, I can draw an hour or whatever, I get different drawings than when I need to draw fast, like within a minute, then I get those small characters, like, okay, quick one now, quick one now. Yeah, you told me uh, like a little bit earlier in a, in, a, in a conversation we had before that you can drink and draw and talk and yeah. draw because yeah. I can imagine what you're saying that yeah. you, when your friends on on a nice in a nice pub and you're drawing yeah. all the time, uh, it, it can be also like a bit awkward. Like Jeremy is always drawing in his book, yeah. but you can't do the set yeah. things at the same time, right? Yeah, I'm lucky that I'm able to do that. Um, same thing with uh, well, w when I'm with friends, I can draw and and and, and make jokes and drink uh, and have fun. But also with my kids uh, at home, uh, when uh, sometimes people of my kids say, uh, "Daddy, are you uh, drawing again?" and then I, I I need to give them attention as well. Um, and I draw in the same time, so uh, it works for me. Same thing with 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 work. Uh, when I worked in a, uh, in the studio, I can work on my screen, uh, focus on it, work fast, and still have conversations or listen to music. All I right. feel comfortable with that. But that's also that gives me joy. And I know a lot, there are a lot of people or artists that really need their, uh, the, the the quietness. Uh, they don't want to talk or don't listen to music. But for me, 
yeah, I'm lucky that I can focus really well. Uh, uh, even if I hear something, I'm not distracted. I hear it, but I'm not like, what's that? What's that? Oh, what's that? And uh, no, I can draw and uh, I'm yeah. relaxed. So it becomes a little bit your second nature. Yeah, I guess it is. Um, yeah. uh, and, and I like it that way. It yeah. gives me extra joy. So I'm not, I don't feel stressed All because right. of that. So I can really do whatever I want and... Yeah, again, no limitations. Well, it's liberating because sometimes yeah. I speak with artists, they really yeah. need that silence. Yeah, and I they know. They need like this yeah. white cube yeah. and their own, yeah. uh, as, how do you say, creative bubble yeah. to, to hide themselves. Yeah. And I, feel lucky, I yeah. feel lucky that I'm able to do it for me then eh, because I don't have any limits. I can draw whenever I want, wherever I want. And yeah, I feel free. That's a good thing. Hey, and talking about free, there is like these kind of little observations. Yeah. Um, and then, then I saw this little kind of storytelling in it. Uh, is that something that you're looking for also when you're doing these reference drawings? Like, what are the little stories that I can use to that actually gives an yeah. extra layer to your character design yeah. or your drawings? As, as much as possible. Um, uh, sometimes um, when you sketch and you have the time, yeah, you can spend a little bit more time on the story. Um, so then I use it, of course, and depending on what's happening. And sometimes uh, those things aren't happening, but you imagine that those things are happening. Eh? The, um, you, you, push some, you push certain moments to oh. make that story so Make stronger. a little changement in the reference yeah, material do. so that it comes yeah. to life. Yeah, I, again, if there's nothing there, you can come up with so because it triggers our ideas, it, it comes to life in your head. A certain person can give you a certain feeling about who that person is or could be, and then you try to capture that and you play with that. But again, it's all depending on the time. I, I noted for myself when I have less time, I'm drawing a little bit safer, and when I have more time that I really can draw whatever I want, yeah, then I can play more and experiment more. Okay. In the beginning, then the safe, and then you start to do stranger things or. Uh, have more fun, more, make more jokes, because I'm always looking critical at my work. Like, okay, Jeremy, you did it too safe today. Uh, next time, push uh, your story more and make more. I'm really always critical about what I do. It's not like blaming, but no, a reminder. Next time, do this. And also, why didn't I do it? Oh yeah, I forgot, or I didn't have time, or I, I try to understand how I function myself when I draw. Well, interesting that you're telling this because it's like you're challenging yourself, you just explained. Um, we're both around from the same age, so we grew yeah. up in the yeah. 80s. Um, uh, we had also this, this uh, same thing that there wasn't that much reference for us. Mm -hmm. There was like Disney, uh, the first films of Disney, uh, and, and some comics, but there were no books in the library that helped us. No, those movies there were only no you can tutorials only see them in the theaters and no uh, nowadays you can see them at home on uh, analyzed on YouTube. Uh, that wasn't then. That you wasn't then. So we were always looking to train ourselves like in a creative way, but you still do. You just explained to us that you found yourself as a, as a young. In, uh, inspired uh, kid again. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and keeps training. Yeah. But now you, ha of course, have the uh, the access to internet and tutorials. So what are you doing now next to the references? I see you here drawing uh, using uh, online tools. Yeah. Um, what kind of things that you're looking up in internet? What is it like reference yeah. material, photos? Or it, it depends. It depends on what I want to draw. Um, in this case, um, yeah, gesture drawing. Um, and you have some great uh, sites on the internet. This is Kogi Cafe. And there are so many options to practice, uh, um, to analyze the body, the, 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 the poses, etc. Um, so it's easy here. Uh, you don't have to put much effort into it to find it because it's all there. And um, sometimes you need a certain pose and you, you start Googling. Um, to see if you find a pose. Uh, sometimes uh, I, I, I pose myself, then I put my uh, phone uh, on a cupboard or something, and I capture that pose to analyze it a little bit. So y you try to find ways to, to, to be inspired. And this is, is, is a good uh, exercise, of course, um, in, in understanding the body. And then sometimes you shift to uh, anatomy books about how the structure is with the bones and the muscles. Uh, um, and I always uh, tell myself I need it, need to do this more often. Um, so sometimes you're in a flow and you practice it a lot, and then you let it go again. 
Um, it's a little bit like ups and downs. Looking at this, I already thinking like, okay, I need to do it again when I go home. So uh, <laughs> it's because fun. what what do you see then that you say, okay, this could have been better, or I have to train a little bit more? Because sometimes sometimes people say, okay, but this is a perfect drawing. So, but you raise the level all the time and all the time. So what yeah, are you yeah. seeing here that you say, okay? When I'm sketching again, I'm going to improve this when I look part at a this, bit more. Uh, I, d I don't know when I look at this, because here I tried something else. I like to experiment. Eh? You can draw a body really realistic. And sometimes I uh, try to bend reality uh, in colors or uh, get a certain feeling. Or um, here also mixing the poses. I don't know. That's a little bit of the... The artist in in me, yeah. I told you that I always wanted to do uh, art school and then be a painter and thinking more expressive. Um, so that's still in me. Uh, when I look at it, then I still think about when I was a kid. And you just talked about reference. When I was a kid, I didn't have books about um, how to draw in comic style. Uh, my mother had art books, so from the museums with uh, the really expressive, with the Picassos. And those were the books that I looked at. So I remember when I was a kid, I often had really strange drawings as a kid, like distorted faces and or I don't know. And 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 I really like to play the, with that uh, mixture because I, uh, that's a cool thing about drawing for yourself. I don't have any rules. I can draw whatever I want. So sometimes you have a certain goal or a certain story, and some you want. Sometimes you want to experiment. Because then you end up in new areas and you can take that small part for a character or something. So that's why I like to explore a lot. Even if it's really out there and strange things, you can really get cool things out of it. This is Jeremy's blue period. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and uh, here you see, uh, yeah, of course, we all were suffering uh, uh, a corona, so we were behind a Zoom session yeah. a lot. So this is like all people that you uh, spoke recently and you just portray them. Uh. Yeah, I, uh, every time when I had a conversation, well, of course, I had it with uh, when I worked uh, uh, for a company. I, I observed my colleagues in uh, conversations with presentations, but also on the left you see a presentation on a festival. I don't. I thought it was at Annecy. I don't know. Yeah, it's Annecy. Yeah. It is. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And... Um, yeah, I, I listen to people and I just grab the opportunity to, to sketch along. I really like to do that because then uh, I have fun. Uh, yeah, well, it, it connects to what we talked about, that I'm able to listen and draw at the same time. So this as well, I'm listening to conversations. Uh, I love listening to those things that inspire me. Often when I draw for myself, I listen to uh, those pep talks or things that you can learn. Um, there are many artists that are really s inspiring, uh, that also help me in an indirect way to to find my path. Um, yeah, I don't know. I th that's what really helped me. Uh, as a, I didn't know anything about that, that industry, about animation and character design, and how is it? What can I expect? And then you start looking on the internet, or you get tips from friends, and there are really amazing artists out there that really help me. Uh, for example, uh, Steven Silver with also all his art talks, and he talked about certain problems or uh, about being insecure. Uh, uh, what what is like the most important lesson that you say? Okay, uh, from Steven Silver, what what does you say? Okay, this was for me. What really like an, an eye-opening advice no, I that everybody that is starting off or like is insecure. Uh, uh, finding their pathway in the industry. Yeah, that, I don't. That I really don't know if I can combine it to one thing. Uh, there are so Some. many elements. Uh, it's about uh, also with age. Um, I, I hear a, long, uh, a lot of young kids uh, talking about, "I'm too old to draw. I'm too old to get a job." And then they're they're in their twenties, and I was forty when I had that thought about. I'm too old to make a switch uh, to be a character designer uh, because all the kids are so young and good. And, uh, and, and, and in those talks, he talked about uh, you're never too old and believe in yourself, but also uh, be realistic like you have to practice. Practice every day, no excuses. I needed those talks. I needed to hear that. I needed to... Uh, th there's also uh, online... Uh, um, uh, 
thing from um, the perfect bait from uh, Bobby Chu. It's also about becoming an artist and what you need to do and make it a habit in drawing. And those were the things that I grabbed to listen to, to motivate myself. myself and that really helped. About, uh, I remember that he talked about uh, yeah, if you start drawing each day, it, it becomes a habit like uh, brushing your teeth. Um, and I did that. Now it's really a part of me again. And then I'm not talking about work because uh, everything that I share on Instagram is all in my spare time. I never share things from work. And I was drawing um, 40 hours a week for work. I've been uh, working full time for companies um, and I had to do it in my spare time. I had two kids, a uh, family house. So in the evening, in the night, uh, lunch breaks, morning, uh, whenever I could, I started to practice. And I remembered that you need to practice to get better. And the same thing with the athlete. You can't get there without training. What makes you happy when drawing? What is like yeah, some people, when, <laughs> they run, when they run, they have like dopamine. Uh, they, be, they become happy by doing a marathon or something. Like when you're drawing, it's training and it's like also your work and, and, and maybe, maybe it's like a, a, a kind of part of your behavior. But when you draw, what, what, what makes I don't, what, I what, don't what know. Makes you happy? The fact that you, the, that you mentioned it, I already start feeling really happy. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, I, I really feel blessed now. I, I'm, I'm so, on a creative level, I'm, I'm super happy and I really... Uh, have the feeling that I just started. Um, it's 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 the passion, but also what's super amazing that makes me smile is that I, um, when I started this path um, a, as a character designer, uh, practicing um, the people that you start to meet because uh, I've worked with many peoples and 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 people people think in a different way. But uh, as a character designer, I, I start to know there are people out there that are really obsessed with drawing. Like me. And uh, when I was young, I never had friends that were creative. Uh, uh, so nobody could inspire me. Uh, teachers were inspiring. Um, so I let it die, that creativity, because I, and I wasn't able to motivate myself to push me there at that moment. Um, now I'm older and I learned a lot of stuff. Well, I have the discipline to do it, but along the way, when I started meeting people, artists, uh, yeah, you go to festivals, you, you, you do portfolio reviews, uh, you show your work, uh, yeah, then, then you start to get certain hope or you get feedback and you know I'm go I need to improve this. And yeah, all those things. It's, it's really, everything is interesting about art. I mean, uh, I can't stop talking about it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah but, it, but it's a good thing. So it comes really natural yeah, and it makes it you is. happy from out it, without it, thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, it really makes me super happy and uh, I can't wait to draw each time. And it's great to see people draw and create things and also enjoy it. I, I, it's a sort of a chemistry, I guess. There's nothing better than also working with other artists that are creative and drawing together and uh, that things... I yeah, but know. an important part of that, what I think that you're saying is that some, sometimes people force themselves to become uh, good. Absolutely. Like really obsessively yeah. Force, yeah. force themselves because yeah. they are comparing themselves about what's happening online. Yeah. There's like a huge criteria. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they raise the bar so high that it's yeah. really hard to reach yeah. because they don't want to miss that job or that opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. And it becomes really stressful, right? And then when it becomes stressful... It will be it becomes also a little bit more caging instead of yeah. liberating. Yeah. But if I hear you talking about yeah. it, it actually liberated yeah, you. Yeah, I have the opposite. And I'm really aware about what's going on out there. Uh, I'm often on Instagram and I see a lot of artists and uh, uh, I read their stories and their posts. And then often I notice that people are really struggling uh, on the art level. Um, they're so harsh for themselves about that they need to deliver, they're thinking about what other people think. I'm lucky that I don't have that part. Well, of course, there's, a, there's a, always a, a healthy part in that. Huh? Uh, I want to improve, get better. I'm also insecure um, sometimes. Can I do it? But it's th the most important thing for me is to create. It's a thing that I had to learn because um, uh, five years ago when I was uh, working in the gaming industry also, when you work somewhere, you, you 
you see things that you are missing in creativity and you can fight against it about I want it and I miss this at my job and you come home unhappy eh, after going to work and you need to go again and and then I noticed that I and a lot of people try to find their happiness only in their jobs and then I there was a simple solution and it is to take that thing out of your job and take it home and do it there nobody that stops you you can draw whatever you want and that was the it's so obvious and simple well for me it worked because then why didn't i do it why did i let go that passion of drawing at home eh, because you have a uh, um, you're busy in your life with kids but why can't i draw at home and practice it and then i start that i i didn't miss those things at work anymore because i can practice it at home and i could you could take still the create it even though it's it's in your mind so you were yeah, still able and to i took all the learnings that i i did at home i took to the job as well so it gave me energy it was a win win situation um and of course i'm always super lucky that i was able to to draw uh in a company yeah that created games uh i i always liked it and it was great um and uh, but I also know how it is to work in, uh, yeah, I've worked in a clothing store or whatever. So, but at home you can do whatever you want, and also don't put pressure on it because I had goals when I started with with character design. I want to be a character designer for future films. That's my goal, still my goal. Um, but if I don't succeed, that's also okay because I really enjoy every day. I've learned so much. I never drew as much as I did the last couple of five years. Um, I met so many amazing people, really amazing people that still inspire me. And there are a lot of people that I still want to uh, meet. Um, so I can't lose. And the fact that I said I tried, I did my best, I already won. And I'm, I'm not even there yet. Uh, if we're talking about character design, oh, sorry, is uh, because I'm talking a lot of about the past, uh, about the game industry, but this year, um, three months ago, uh, the studio closed down where I worked. And this was now for me, uh, it was the moment for me to to follow my heart and start as a freelance character designer. So now I'm, I'm just started as a character designer. A lot of people thought that I was a character designer for a profession all those years, but I wasn't. But I was practicing it, it every day, so now it's just starting for me. Yeah, but what it seems like if you're talking about this, that you, in my perspective, you have quite a healthy relationship with like passion for work. Or yeah. for, sorry, the passion for drawing yeah. and what's work and what's part of your, uh, let's call it like, like your thrive. Yeah. That yeah. you really want to yeah. draw also yeah. because it makes you happy. Yeah. Because sometimes I hear people talking about that they lose their interest in drawing because of clients of the work, of the pressure. Yeah. But if you can make a healthy uh, diversion between, okay, this is like what you said, this is what I did in the gaming studio, yeah. and I didn't always like it that much, but when I had ideas that I actually couldn't execute, yeah. I just did it afterwards yeah. for fun in my yeah. spare time. Yeah. So in that way, I kept motivated. Yeah. Well, I didn't I lose interest in drawing. Yeah, and also within uh, things, it probably people have assignments eh, for uh, when they work for companies. Try to find your challenge within what's possible. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's what I always did. Although sometimes you don't like certain assignments, um, it's your profession. You're hired to do it, and then I'll find a challenge within that. It's, it's my goal to make the best out of it. And then, and then at a certain point you switch, and then you have fun with it because there there are boundaries. And then um, that triggers me, challenges me to get uh, the best out of it, or even more. When people tell me that's not possible, uh, now th then I think, well, wait, we'll find a way with story, with creating a character, or when something is missing. I don't know. The, there's always a way. Yeah. So sometimes you really need that limitations to get the best out of you. Yeah, I don't thing. care. Give me all the space uh, that's there, and I'll use it. And if there's no space, I'll take that space and create <laughs> extra. I don't know. Th that's really uh, that's a mind setting that I always have. I right. I'll try to look at the positive things, and and, and although there are negative things, um, I'll try to. It's there. I can't change it, or well, at least I try. Well, that's a good attitude. 
Hey, going back to the yeah. to, to your sketchbooks again, uh, we see here some caricatures. Um, yeah. uh, it's a, and also really nice rendering of texturing, etc. Um, exaggeration. Um, where do you look at when you when you watch at, uh, at at people that you want to portray when doing a caricature? Uh, yeah, at everything. Uh, what makes a person unrecognizable? Uh, uh, maybe in things in how they act or uh, does it help you for as a character designer to really focusing on like some special yeah, features absolutely. in somebody's yeah, yeah, face? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's when you look at people, you first have a there's always a first impression. Always, I mean, you're thinking something about a person because of how they wear their clothes, what they wear, uh, how their hair is, uh, whatever. Everything can tell something about a person, and and in this case, uh, you can exa exaggerate that. Um, so you try to find those small things or big things. Sometimes it's really obvious. I always tell, especially when you look at people that are perfect, uh, that's super boring for me. <laughs> I don't like perfect people. Uh, they there's, don't. There's, there's, I, I spoke with uh, Carter Goodrich yeah. about that once, and he said, like, perfect people, they don't have, like, a story to no, tell. No, yeah, exactly. I really don't, don't, no, I don't like it as a big thing. Or then if somebody is perfect, then you push it yeah, to but make it design, a joke out of design it. The design is just, like, yeah. totally polished, and there is no things that actually is appealing on somebody's yeah, face. Yeah, and they it's all really look difficult. alike. Yeah. So there's nothing special. You yeah. can put them in one row and, and they're not appealing. Or if you ask somebody, uh, what are your thoughts about that person? Then, uh, well, I don't know. It's really like flat. Yeah. Okay, because here you see some recognizable features, but it yeah. actually you want to know more about that person. Yeah, I guess so. Well, you're, uh, these are just drawings that I did as an experiment. And normally I don't do these kinds of drawings, but... Th then suddenly uh, I see something and I'm curious, like, okay, can I do that? And then I grab my sketchbook and then I start sketching. I remember the first, uh, th th there was a series of this that I did with famous people and I was on holiday at uh, at the table in the evening and then I start drawing David Bowie once and then more appeared around it and I thought, okay, this is fun. And then I did a few more and uh, and then I... I I did it, and I think, okay, now it's uh, time for me to d do different things again. But then when I, again, when I look at it, I think, oh, maybe I'll try it again soon. And but what, what, what's difficult, because we can say, okay, you take out that special features, and then uh, uh, you exaggerate it a bit, and then it becomes appealing, but recognizable that when you were doing caricatures, and we see Grace Jones here, and we see, I forgot his name, but he's a really famous uh, bad guy in cowboy films. Uh, uh, Lee Von Cleef. Lee, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, the from one. The yeah, there's uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes. But in this case, I try to put a little bit story in it. If you look, ah, yeah, here you, sh you see the, the, the crosses yeah, from the, the graveyard. Yeah. Uh, so I try to put in some story. I try to... to I love to do things, yeah, just to try things. Yeah, because it's still it's still Lee Van Cleef, that's yeah. his name. But it's really funny that here you have like this real small face, here you have like this silhouette with a big nose. Yeah. But even though when you use also this more sculpt kind of silhouetting, yeah. it stays Lee Van Cleef. Yeah, well, but this page, for example, it, it's you're exploring, eh? you're searching for certain things, you're analyzing a picture, um, what makes him him, and uh, and again, um, I try to put something in it from the story. Uh, the fact that he, you see the skull, um, he's the bad guy in the movie, uh, kills a lot of people. Um, so I try to put those elements in there, and 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 push that, push reality to something more interesting, I guess. You could also say that when you are a character designer, you do a lot of research. Right, so yeah, you absolutely. also see examples yeah. about like yeah. uh, materializing stuff and giving it like nice patterns Super on the drawings research. and the fashions. Yes, how 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 are you um, approaching research? Yeah, when you have an assignment, for example. Uh, yeah, Google is my friend. I mean, uh, I I type in the words uh, and then I start somewhere, and by looking at the the, the pictures, um, it pushes me in sometimes in new directions. Uh, uh, yeah, it's like a chain reaction, I, I guess, with um, 
reference because you search for the first thing that pops in in your mind pops up in your mind hell oh, okay i need to draw this it, this means this so type in and look for it but it can also mean this and then you start bending it a little bit and you come in different areas and find new things that you didn't come up with in the beginning and that's what you want to do eh? same thing with sketching in the f in the, f the first sketch is always yeah but probably everybody draws it's the same first uh, idea first idea and then uh, you need to push yourself to look further and deeper and what happens if i bend it but it's still Th because that's because I work a lot with students, and because uh, I'm a teacher, uh, and then they make a drawing, and then it's sometimes it's their fourth drawing, a fourth drawing, and then they say this is it, and I said why is why is this the one you know why yeah. is this the final design yeah. and you think it's the best yeah because I like it yeah but that's not your reference right you're first going to to catch as much as ingredients as possible, yeah. do as much yeah. as possible yeah. of explorations, and then as a curator, yeah. you're going to combine all the yeah. ingredients and then the Everything needs to have a reason. I mean, uh, I can't remember the last time I said, yeah, because I like it. No, it's because it tells this and this, and this is needed. Um, so everything that you put in a character is there with a reason. Um, and sometimes you have already have a story, so you find the right elements to create that character. And sometimes I turn it around, I start sketching, and then a story appears. And that's the thing with, because everybody is used to uh, stories, and then you translate it into art. Um, but a story isn't there directly either. Eh? A story starts somewhere. So uh, sometimes I like to approach it that way when I start drawing. And I start drawing, and then something pops up in that sketch, and then that's the first element of that story. And then I start bending in, and then the characters create, uh, appear. Uh, uh, that's what I like about it. I can play with it in the way that I, I like. I mean, that's also why I like sketching so much. And that's yeah. also why I, yeah. I did that exposition during Playgrounds in the art department a few times. Is why I like it so much is because, in a way, it gives you a kind of insight in what happens in the brains of the artist. You see the sketches, then you see them looking, finding the right yeah. lines. Then you see also how they combine things, or yeah. there is like anticipation yeah. in it. Because this example, you have this carrot and this evil snowman. Um, and I saw this one, so you start to do, okay, how can I use the nose of the carrot, but how can I use that carrot in different ways? Yeah. So it becomes like fangs, or it becomes yeah. like horns, or yeah. in, in that sense, it's... it's yeah, this is, a, this is just a page. It, it's about having fun for myself. It's, uh, it's not always about being strict and I need to do this. And so no, no, but in that sense, it, it helps you to develop stories or to make unique characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and because in my sketchbook, uh, I think every page uh, has a different theme. Uh, I hardly um, use one theme for a longer time. Sometimes I'm, I, I'm, I'm curious and then I'll, I'll spend more time in it, on it. But it's the same thing with, with, with sketching. Um, you have, uh, for example, one character, and you make different versions out of that. And then, okay, you have different options. But it's the same thing with when I pick a theme. Well, I I create different themes, different stories, and then at the end, I pick one out of them. So I, I have books full, and, and, and with all those sketches, I can still continue with that and make a complete story out of them. I have so many stories in my head. Like, okay, I have super my <laughs> many options. Hey, and drawing from references, analyzing, trying to put stories in it, caricature, and then exaggerating things, and then go freely, right? So yeah. with character design, in this sense, this is uh, uh, there is no boundaries in that sense. No. So how do you start if there are no boundaries? <laughs> how do I start? Well, uh, I pick a sort of a story, and then uh, yeah, I, I start with that. I mean... Um, because when you make one sketch and you try something and think, oh, that's possible, and what happens if I turn it around, or uh, uh, do I need a, uh, how do you say it, an evil guy, or uh, is there a victim, or uh, is there a family, is there, it can be anything, and then you start trying and make it grow, and again, if, if, if the story isn't that clear to you, you just experiment with characters, and if you, you have your story clear, then you know what you need, 
uh, and who you need and why he needs to look like that. Um, because what I liked about this is, is for example, these are of course like these are crystals and stones mm -hmm. that you actually take a stone and then you're just going to explore how can I use the shape of a yeah, stone, yeah. of the features of a stone, and yeah. then make all these kind of iterations about it. Um, and also that crystallizing, yeah. almost diamond kind of different textures of stones. And then try to find the features of cute or villain. Yeah. Uh, is, yeah. is that like also a little bit how you work? Yeah, absolutely. It's really, uh, and then when you have a villain, then probably you need different uh, elements for that villain. Um, Sharp edges. Uh, uh, yeah, but you experiment uh, with that. What's possible, and uh, yeah, and of course you can make a villain out of those uh, other rocks with the uh, with the green on it. Um, but th again, there are no rules in here. And if there are rules, then you adapt to that. All right, we're looking here at a few. You clearly can see. It. That's why I like your sketchbooks so much, is that you really see your quests. Every page is a kind of a, a quest, quest a, yeah. a, a, a search for some solutions, like from going from the eyes to the mustache to the shape of the head to the lines to the wrinkles to, and then you go yeah. like. Yeah, it's it's also analyzing it. Huh? Yeah. You, you have a character, and then hey, wait, uh, how does this nose work, and why should it be like this? And also, but these are like already. I can imagine for like really. How do you say this? This takes quite a lot of time to already make them, right? Uh, or is this? Quite yeah, I don't know what the doesn't definition doesn't make sense. Time is not an issue. No, but, but these are really detailed drawings already. Yeah, it's 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 always ha uh, difficult to answer those questions when people ask me, uh, "Does it take you a lot of time?" But what's the definition of a lot of time? I mean, True. I don't I don't know. Uh, uh, when there's an evening for me to draw, I I, I use it. I don't know two hours or three hours to sketch and. Yeah, is that a lot of time? I don't know. But I know what to draw and I sketch directly. Um, yeah, for me it isn't complex because, well, for me the sketching doesn't start on paper, it starts in my head. All right. So that's really, um, I'm sketching all the time. It's interesting also while forming studies and creating courses, it's like what's in your mind, getting it out of your hands. Yeah, yeah. Was there a moment in your life that you say, okay, um, um, I still can't draw what I want to draw, and now I finally can draw whatever comes in my mind? Uh, well, or I is that still not the case? Well, I, I, I bump into it uh, often that I want to draw something and it's not getting out of it, out of my hands like I want to. But I try to understand what's missing in my skills and then I okay now, now I need to focus more again we're on uh, gesture drawing I guess or I need to know more about uh, bone structure or uh, but I all but I'm not how do you say it um, I'm not worried about it because I know when I put the practice in it then it will will get I will get there so then I it for me it's the goal to start doing it start practicing it start analyzing it and uh, and yes uh, of course I get frustrated like damn it I can't do it and, uh, and 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 sometimes like whoa this artist is so good at it so I need to step up uh, my uh, in my skills and practice this more um so it's never finished right no but people sometimes they think well if I can do this, I can do this, I can no, do I, I, the, the, I, Learning is, uh, it will never stop. It's not only in the, in the technical skills, but also um, it will never stop because everything evolves around us. Uh, society changes, new things pop up. Everything changes constantly and you adapt to that. And it makes it cool. I mean, you never get bored, um, but... Uh, but the, the basic skills are super important because if you don't possess those, then you are really limited in what you want to draw. Yeah. And, I, and I, I, I'm really aware about it because it stops me sometimes to create certain art. And I, and, and I can be frustrated about it or I can think like, okay, I need to change that and be good at it. So uh, that's why you constantly shift in um, sketching in, in concept ideas and then sometimes practicing this or in uh, drawing from life. What I also think is the huge diversity in your work, right? Yeah. And when you see one of the important struggles that I meet with upcoming talent or people that are like looking in, the f in, in getting into the industry, they say, well, I need a handwriting. 
I need a okay. certain kind of style. Um, I want to be recognized. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but in in a sense, like trying a lot also helps you in that sense uh, to draw in different kind of contexts. Or and that also uh, is is. Uh, is um, the outcome of that is that you're never finished when you don't have a style, right? Because you always can learn a lot by do by approaching it differently. Yeah, I know that people are worried about style and they often ask like, okay, how do I v develop your style and how can I draw in your style? Um, but style really grows on you. It evolves. It, it's Style is, 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 is a combination of um, things that you practice, things that you are interested in, uh, things that inspire you, uh, your life. Um, that's, that's what your style is. That, that's how, how it grows. And, um, and if you're really diverse, then probably in your real life, you like a lot of stuff because you get inspired by that. Yeah, and I that's really, uh, people need to understand that style grows on you. And without drawing, it will not grow. It will grow by drawing, looking at things, going to a museum, looking at life, l whatever. But draw and, and also uh, dare to challenge yourself. Yeah, because sometimes people from 22, they see something happening on Instagram and they say, yeah. I want to draw in that style. Yeah, yeah I, uh, for me, that's, that's, the, 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 that's not interesting. I, I, I look at art... And then I think I want to do that, but for me then, I want to do that is to possess certain basic skills. It's not a style that I want to possess, but I want to understand it. And then I, maybe I can pick something out of it that I can use. Same thing as a color that you see. It can be something in a style that you see. Like, okay, what happens if I put that and mix it and bend it? Uh, that's what I find interesting. I, and I, and if, if somebody's really good at something, I want to understand what makes it good, what makes it appealing, or whatever I like about it. I really want to understand. So it's not copying, because copying is not interesting. Uh, it's a golden rule. Don't copy, but analyze. Analyze things. Uh, try to understand the source yeah, you and, need uh, to and try. adapt that source yeah. instead of copying it. Yeah, absolutely. And then you, and because if you understand it, then you can play with it. If you copy it, it's just a copy. Yeah, why, yeah, but again, somebody uh, there are a lot of people that like to copy art, and that's good as well. Oh um, yeah, fan art is no problem at all. No, and absolutely. You have to start yeah. somewhere. And yeah, absolutely. And you learn a lot problem. of because yeah. you can draw, but then you can uh, copy it, but try to learn from it. I yeah. think that's the thing that I uh, meant to say. You can copy it, but think, think for yourself about it. W w what am I doing? Why do? Why is it drawn like this? Yeah, and the reason also is when you get an assignment, for example, you have to understand the why certain kind of artists use that style because it matches the assignment really good. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't know where it comes from, yeah. you cannot adapt it yeah. or work specifically and, and yeah. try to solve it. Yeah, it makes you strong as an artist, yeah. not only in what you draw, but what you can tell about it. Eh? If you have the art director or whatever, wh why did you draw it? And then you're coming at the point where you just said, like, because I like it. Yeah, that's not going to work. You need to explain, well, I picked this because of the color uh, refers to this and, 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 and shapes are in a certain way because of... If you can explain it, people take you more serious, I guess, as an artist. Yeah, but, but you also know what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it's quite important. You can explain yourself. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's important. That's important thing. Yeah. Hey, um, last topic uh, yeah. that I would like to discuss, it's rendering. Uh, so I see some of your sketch, uh, sketch from your sketchbook. Mm -hmm. And then you take them into coloring. Um, this one as well is a nice example. Um, sometimes rendering can be quite difficult, right? But for you, it's normally the challenge when rendering stuff. Yeah, well, I, I found an easy way um, uh, to do it really quickly because I, when I draw for myself, I often draw in my sketchbooks and at work I... I always draw uh, in Photoshop. So I'm, I'm feeling comfortable uh, drawing in Photoshop. Um, but when I draw in my sketchbook, sometimes I want to see a quick result. And I, I work a lot with color pencils. I like that as well. But sometimes you want to see it in, in, in on the computer. You, you get more intensity with colors. You can experiment more uh, or change it quickly. And I just grab a simple photo and... Uh, open it in Photoshop and add color to it. And it's really easy for me. Mm -hmm. But I don't push it towards uh, that it's really rendered, rendered. I don't know, sometimes you see the super polished and then you lose 
all the life in it. And I, that's what I like about using those sketches. Then there's still life in it. And, and it's about adding the color to give the complete feeling. Because that's a, pro uh, that's a problem that I also recognize. It's that sometimes people do a line art. Yeah. And then it becomes really flat. Or yeah. It can become really yeah, flat. Absolutely. Because all the lines uh, just take away the, the yeah. vivid of the, of the line art. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't like that too much to, to do that. I, d I did it back in the days. But what you said, I, I noticed that you, you lose certain things. But again, I'm leaning uh, on the fact that I have outlines. Eh? Because if you want to... Uh, get a 3D look, yeah, then you need to get rid of those lines. So um, then you have a complete different style. And I yeah. can do that as well. But in this case, for me, it's the goal to um, explore, uh, find new characters quickly. And if I want to, I can render them and remove all the lines. But I'm not interested in that because I'm looking for the story. I'm not looking for a rendered character. Um, I'm looking for a personality in a... And then yeah. it can grow or it can change. Yeah, and it really helps also, I think, when using these kind of sketchy lines that are still recognizable in your, uh, in your designs when yeah. you did the rendering, but also keeping the line art in the same kind of colors sometimes. So some, sometimes people use only black and white. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll try to really adapt to kind it quickly. Of cut out stuff, yeah. but it really blends yeah. in. Yeah. To make it less obvious. So it, yeah. they're still there, and again, I can remove them, but it will cost me more time. And um, and for this it works. Well, here you s notice that probably you're a little bit more darker lines. But again, it's, it depends on how much time do I have. I adapt to what I have. That's really um, the way I work. Beautiful drawings. Also, they like the texturing. How is it also something that you constantly try to train yourself in, like giving this kind of... Uh, a lizard kind of skins and how to adapt no, those one or no i don't have specific thoughts about it i sometimes i look at uh, reference and see how it's how it works i know there are a lot of uh, artists that work with those pencils and those have those textured pencils brushes a and, and yeah i have to admit that i'm a little bit old-fashioned in a way that i want to draw it myself I want to create it. I don't want to rely on something else. So, for example, when you're somewhere and you need to show your skills on a computer uh, and I need to draw something, and then uh, then you, some people say, ah, sorry, I can't do it because I don't have that brush and it doesn't work. No, I never want to have an excuse for drawing some. Same thing with uh, draw with certain pencils. No, there's no excuse. Draw wi with what you have and then you need to visualize that so i don't want to lean on, on 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 too many tricks like a texture pencil or a and you can benefit from it of course eh, with concept art quickly um, but i like to understand how i can paint a texture instead of the 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 fast way with a brush right hey when going back to when you were a boy of 15 years old yeah and uh, you would now talk to yourself you would talk to you as a 15-year-old boy. What kind of advice would you give you to yourself? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. And I thought about it many times. Yeah, the only thing that I could say that I keep holding on to what you love to do and, and don't give up. Uh, I knew that I let it go at a certain age, so I would advise myself to keep on doing it because... Uh, great things can happen um yeah it's a simple advice for myself but it isn't that complex right. and believe in yourself and and always i think the, the the most important thing with art is have fun that's really the, the most important thing uh, that's what i advise everybody first have fun with drawing uh, the other stuff will come or not but you still have fun the, the yeah, yeah. Right. Thank you so much, Jeremy, You're for welcome. sharing so many knowledge uh, uh, and about your career, but also on your skill set and also sharing so many great work. I yeah, you're welcome. It was uh, great to be here and uh, give a little bit of insight in how I work and uh, how I think. Uh, again, I can talk for hours, I guess. But uh, yeah, you should do a talk at Playground soon. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah, it would be great. Thank you so much, Jeremy. You're welcome. And also, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hope to see you another time in a new episode of Playgrounds TV. Have a great evening. Bye-bye.